In this teaching tip video, you will learn about some study hacks so that you can teach these strategies in your own courses. We will cover four different study hack strategies. Studying your study notes, creating test questions, SQ3R, and the curve of forgetting. Let's get started, shall we? Number one, studying your study notes. Once you are in your study hall and trying to study using the study power hour, you need to develop a good process for studying itself. One great strategy is to try to recreate your notes as a graphic organizer. Work on retrieving the information from your head like you would during a test. Create one bubble circle at a time and build your organizer off of it. Continue building it one circle and one line at a time. If you had any areas you had trouble recalling, you know what you need to study more. If you are proficient in creating graphic organizers, try converting your Cornell notes into graphic organizers. As you look at your Cornell notes, immediately fill in checkpoints and create the bluff for each page. This will help consolidate this information for long-term memory. Afterwards, cover up the assembly area and try to walk through your notes using only the checkpoints. Answer any questions you placed in checkpoints and try to explain the key points you wrote in checkpoints. Number two, creating test questions. As you study your study notes, try to keep your brain active by looking for potential test questions in your notes. Type them in a separate document you can reference later and try to answer without your notes. Do not become passive during your studies because that is when you start to daydream and lose concentration. Remember to rehearse any process like notes. Try to list out the steps in order from memory. Try to perform an exercise or do classwork using the process over and over again. Even if you completed the exercises, delete your work and do it again. Repetition helps to develop procedural memory. Number three, SQ3R. SQ3R stands for survey, question, read, recite, and review. With survey, you basically scan your material, headings, summaries, graphs, pictures, basically cueing the brain for information. With question, ask yourself, what do I need to know? And look for potential test questions. Now for the three R's. Read, respond to questions and identify main ideas and keywords. Recite, quiz yourself without the material and create more notes, graphic organizers, etc. And review. Look through your new notes created from this process and brief back your material to a classmate. And now for number four, the curve of forgetting. Studies have shown that if we do not review something within the first 24 hours of learning, we will drop up to 80% of what we initially remembered. By day three, we are down to 60%. If we study the information within 24 hours, we will go back to 100% and the decay of the information occurs at a slower rate. So, the more we review, the slower the decay, which means we will not have to review as often in order to keep the information fresh. If you look at this graph, you can see that the slope after each review gets less steep each time and those reviews are spread farther apart. Some simple rules to follow as far as these reviews go is that the first review should be about 10 minutes per academic hour. For a day with 6 hours of lecture and or work, the review would only last 60 minutes. Subsequent reviews would only need about 2 to 5 minutes per academic hour. The more the information is reviewed, the more the neural pathways accessing the information are traversed. This leads to better retention and retrieval, which is why later study sessions require less time to review the same material. In this video, we covered four different study hack strategies. Studying your study notes, creating test questions, SQ3R, and the curve of forgetting. Now that you know more about study hacks, you should be better prepared to teach these strategies in your own courses. Good luck.